How's it going, everybody? Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, taking control of your financial situation. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, the first thing you want to do is pay yourself first. Okay, so paying yourself first is basically prior to prioritizing yourself, prior to prioritizing your financial well-being, uh, that of you and your family. When you put yourself first, you're going to de demonstrate to yourself a form of self-respect because you're acknowledging your financial needs. You also want to make consistent monthly deposits into an investment program, regardless of your other financial commitments. You're going to do it no matter what, because even small, regular investments can yield significant growth over time, especially if you have a favorable rate of return. Next, you want to make sure that you adjust your priorities, okay? Because financial contentment lies in spending less than you earn. You let's say, for instance, um, you make $10, you spend $9, that's going to signify contentment and satisfaction. But on the other side, if you spend more than what you earn, such as making $10 and spending $11, that's going to lead to dissatisfaction and financial strain. It's unfortunate that most American families live within this means in terms of spending more than what they make, putting everything on credit and not really realizing the true cost. 80% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 57% of Americans don't even have at least $1,000 saved up. So this is huge. So the journey to financial independence hinges on saving and retaining money rather than just solely focusing on income generation. Adjust your priorities. Next thing you want to do is change your thinking because most of everything is behavior. About 80% of everything is going to be behavior. Your mindset regarding money significantly impacts your financial outcomes, the way you think about money. Because winning the lottery doesn't guarantee financial stability. It's often said that most people that win the lottery end up squandering all of their wealth and have nothing to show for it. Look at NFL players. I forgot the exact statistics, but there's over 70%, I think it's 78% of NFL players file for bankruptcy within 24 months after leaving the league. Or they have other financial situations due to divorce. This is huge. So money is not the answer. To everything because what is it that you do with the money because your behavior has to change if your behavior doesn't change you'll wind up right back where you started again many self-made millionaires attribute their success to their mindset toward money okay they, the key difference between those who succeed financially and those who struggle is going to all begin with their mindset in terms of how they think about money and their behavior towards it do they just blow it or do they save? Okay. So believing in your, in, in your worthiness of financial security enhances your chances of achieving wealth and peace of mind. Cause that's what we all want. We want contentment. We want peace of mind, but upgrading your self image to acknowledge your deservingness of financial stability can power you to pursue wealth building opportunities. So again, you want to change the way you think. Adjust your lifestyle. Setting priorities in life involves recognizing that you can't have everything and making deliberate choices for each purchase. You want to be calculated, you know, in terms of your spending. You want to know where everything is going. You want to be able to distinguish between wants and needs because this is going to be crucial because so many times we focus on our wants, all right, and not necessarily our needs. And that way we end up getting out of balance. So again, we, we need to understand needs are essential items that's going to be necessary for our survival, like food and shelter. I think of like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If many of you took any management classes, you remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? You know, there's some things you got to take care of first, which is going to be your biological needs, again, such as food and shelter. Wants are going to be those desires for non-essential items. You know, such as ice cream, large house, and my vice is gummy bears, right? I'm constantly, I was constantly buying gummy bears, but had to cut back, not only for my health sake, but also, you know, gummy bears can be pretty expensive, especially the ones that I like. <laughs> so again, wants are going to be those desires that are non-essential items. It doesn't impact your biological needs. 
You know, it's things that you can do without. And if you ever took out, you know, um, your statements and you highlighted all your unnecessary spending, you'll be able to see all your wants in there and how much found money that you can put back into your budget. It's huge. So achieving financial independence may require temporary sacrifices. It's not forever. You know, where some wants must be foregone. You know, because if you live like no other today, you will live like no other on tomorrow. Okay, so again, make your sacrifices now and you can live like no other on tomorrow. Sacrificing certain wants for a period of time is going to be vital for maintaining good financial health and working towards financial goals. So as we're working our baby steps, you know, baby steps one through seven, you're going to make some sacrifices, you know, through uh, baby steps, you know, one through four. There's going to be some sacrifices. But as you move on along the baby steps, now you kind of, you know, budget in some of those things that you enjoy doing. But again, you have to be balanced. You don't want to put everything into your wants. All right. But again, as you get through the baby steps, one through four, now you can start kind of, you know, budgeting in, you know, items that you enjoy doing because you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Okay. Uh, earn additional income. Okay. Because limited family income may restrict the ability to invest more than $50 a month. Okay. It may restrict that because it will take a lot to start saving. But, you know, sometimes if you have limited family income, it may restrict this. So you may want to look at other ways that you can increase your income. But to make substantial financial progress, you want to contemplate taking on a, maybe a part-time job to supp supplement your income. Or additional income from a part-time job can provide the necessary funds to kickstart an investment program. You may have to work a little extra depending on your financial situation because some people just don't make enough. So increasing income through a part-time work, it also enables greater financial flexibility and potential for investment growth. You also want to realign your assets, okay? Realign your assets because taking control and freeing up income for saving is crucial for financial stability. There are two major areas where families may not optimize their finances. One is going to be low interest savings accounts or accumulations with banks, putting everything inside the bank. You know, that's not always going to be necessary, the optimal way of your finances. Because if you're getting 1% on an item and we use a rule of 72, 72 divided by 1 is 72. That means it's going to take 72 years for your money to double. Now you know that that's not the optimal way of putting all your money. Now you want to put your operational money in there. You might want to have your, uh, maybe your uh, mercy savings account, you know, in there. But when it comes to your retirement, you don't want all your eggs inside of low interest savings accounts. You also want to consider reallocating funds from a 1% savings plan to investments that have higher return potential. And number two, we're going to look at high cost life insurance. Life insurance. You want to replace outdated, there's some outdated, expensive cash value insurance policies out there. And of course, I'm not the person that's, that's always going to say, you know, um, term life. I'm not going to be the person to always say whole life. Everything is situational. There are times we need whole life. There are some advanced strategies that you can use with whole life. But for most American families with a household income of $130,000 or less, you know, it, um, whole life insurance may be considered expensive. And with a term, you can replace it with term insurance to, to, uh, to potentially save thousands of dollars in premiums over time. Okay, so this is a good way to free up money. If you do have an outdated whole life policy, you spend a lot in premium and um, you're trying to free up some money, term life might be the way to go. And we look at the theory of decreasing responsibility and show you how that works because um, the younger you are, the more insurance you need because you don't have a lot of wealth. And the older you are, the less, you know, amount of um, responsibilities you have. Your kids have the house. Hopefully, all your debts are paid off. So your need for life insurance isn't going to be as much because you have the wealth. Okay, so there's a theory of decreasing responsibilities where insurance fits a need when your wealth isn't there. But once your wealth is there, it can be replaced. Life insurance can be replaced with your wealth. Okay, that's the concept of the theory of decreasing responsibility. You want to make sure that you avoid the credit trap. Credit card offers convenience, but pose risk if it's not managed um, carefully. 
it can get out of hand. Like the little $20 here, $30 there, it adds up, folks. Next thing you know, you have a $1,000 bill and you're like, what did I get? So you want to avoid the pitfalls associated with plastic money because a lot of times you don't think when you're swiping. You're not thinking. You spend differently than if you're spending with cash, right? So paying the full balance monthly is going to prevent your interest charges and it's going to keep debts from escalating or just simply don't use a credit card at all. That's the ideal part, not to use a credit card at all. Just use your cash. A lot of people talk about points and things of that nature, but the thing is, most people don't redeem their points. That's how credit card companies make their money. Yes, and they maintain their balances. So they paying high interest, and they're not redeeming their points. So it's all a marketing strategy. So you don't want to put everything inside of points and cash back and things of that nature because most people are being, you know, are falling into that credit trap. All right. So again, paying with cash helps control monthly expenses as it promotes mindful spending because you're thinking about what you're doing before you do it. And you want to recognize the abundance of choices that's available regarding your financial future. You also want to set goals and have a plan, all right, folks? Because setting goals is essential for financial success as it provides incentive for making necessary sacrifices. Benchmarks to measure progress along the way. And after setting goals, a financial game plan is necessary. A financial game plan combined with goals forms the foundation for achieving financial objectives. This is huge. You want to have a goal. You want to have a target of what you're going for. Because if you don't have a vision, you don't have a target. You know, the Bible says, you know, <laughs> people perish for the lack of knowledge, right? You want to have a vision, you want to have a goal of what you want to obtain. Visualize it. Write it down. But again, um, that concludes, you know, our presentation for today. Again, this is Coach Wade. And if you want to give me a call, if you need help putting your plan together, feel free to give me a call at 706-940-2253. And to meet again, you guys have a great day. Take care.